Hi there, this is Vivi Cameron here. Welcome to a new video. Today, I want to show you once more how to use water-based markers to add colors to some of the new and gorgeous illustrations by Anita Geram for Colorado Craft. And I'm going to be coloring this one here that is from a stamp set called Proud of You. And I choose it because it has several critters and I can show you how to add colors to all of them in less than 20 minutes. To add colors to this kind of illustrations, you can use different media. I'm going to be using water-based markers. I have here six Artisa and also Tombow. All of these have a brush tip. They are different regarding the anatomy of the pens themselves. But for me, any of these are great tools to add colors to these kind of images. And the most important, apart from the kind of marker that you are going to be using is the paper. The paper is essential and you might find that if you are not using the right paper, you won't be able to enjoy coloring as you should be doing it. So for car making, I really love watercolor paper by Stratmore. This is 300 grams. It's fine grain, so it has very little texture. And this really easy the work with this kind of brush markers. The next in my list is Stratmore Bristol Smooth Paper. This is 270 grams and the surface of the paper is completely smooth. I found easier to do the pen application and blending on these two papers, but there are many other watercolor papers that are great quality, such as Canson, Arches Cold Press, Arches Rough, Arches Hot Press, and Fabriano Cold Press just to name a few. So there you go, options. However, because Arches is 100% cotton, this paper is absorbent and it's going to give you less time to do ink blending. So it's a little bit more challenging to use with these markers. So if you are just starting, I will advise to stick to Stratmore. Now, some people ask me about the color of the paper. So I'm going to try to do my best. Watercolor paper is ivory, so you can see here a Stratmore watercolor paper. This one here is Bristol a smooth paper, and this one here is Arches. To show you the color of the paper a little bit better, I went ahead and I die cut the paper, and here I have Arches hot press. Although this paper has almost no texture, it feels really rough at the touch, like a sandpaper, and it's different in color to Bristol smooth paper. If you can see there, the difference is quite big. And here I have a Stratmore watercolor paper. So I die cut this using one die from this die set called Mini Slimline Rectangles by Simon Says Stamp. And this is another effort to show you the texture of this paper. That is very little. So I'm going to bring here a piece of Nina Solar Crest. That is one of the papers that we use the most in the industry so that you can compare the color of the paper versus that Nina cardstock. So here I have Arches. Here I have Bristol and this one here is a Stratmore watercolor paper. So you can see that all these papers looks different, but today it really doesn't matter because we are going to be covering the surface of the paper completely. Okay, for my convenience, I'm going to be using Stratmore watercolor paper today. I already die cut several pieces. This is the first thing I do when I'm going to create the scenes because this allow me to know exactly the room I have for that scene. So I'm going to grab here some stamps. Um, you can see that the stamps offer a whole scene so you don't have to do a lot of masking. All you have to do is to stamp this on that paper and enjoy coloring. And that's one of the things I love the most about Anita Geram's stamps. So to stamp this on watercolor paper, I'm going to use a waterproof ink. I love VersaFine Onyx Black. And the reason is because it's very juicy. It provides a very detailed and crisp image. This ink is gray for stamping, I really love it. So I'm going to use a stamping platform, as you see there, this is the Misty. And I just place the stamp over the paper, close the lid of the Misty, so the stamp sticks to that lid, and then I can apply ink 
and stamp over and over in the same spot. Sometimes when you are stamping on watercolor paper, you need to do multi-stamping because as it has some texture, you might not get a well-defined stamped image in one go and you need to stamp over and over to achieve a nice and crisp image. So the less texture the paper has is better for stamping and Stratmore papers has very little texture. Once I finish stamping, I like to clean the stamp using clear water and the stamping chami. My stamping chami is a disgrace, it's dirty because I use it every day, but it leaves my stamps really nice and clean. And well, I want to share that with you as well. So it takes very little time and effort to stamp the images in this way and you will achieve beautiful images with minimum waste because when we don't have a stamping platform we make mistakes and we waste paper so a stamping platform is a good thing to have all the time i'm going to start adding colors to this image and i know that you might want to know the exact color i'm using so i'm going to be using six i have them in this box I have the box also in the links in the video description, just in case you want to see where to find this box. And I just grab one marker. This brown is one of my favorites. I have two of them. <laughs> and I'm also grabbing here another browns, a dark brown and some kind of brownish color, brownish colors. <laughs> then I found that I'm grabbing all the time the same colors. I identify the colors because of the color at the bottom of the marker. And I have here four brownish colors and I'm going to organize them from darkest to light. This is dark brown. This one here is brown. This one is beige and this one here is mustard. So those are the colors I'm going to use for the rabbit. And I'm going to start by grabbing the darker color I had in my hand. That was the dark brown. And I'm going to add that color here at the edge or the back of the rabbit and also here and on those areas i might consider that there is a shadow just like that then i'm going to use straight away the brown color that is a reddish color and i'm going to place it just next to those areas in which i apply that other color i'm also going to add brown ink at the top of the head and here at the base of the ears of this rabbit just because that's a very small area and then i'm going to grab the water brush this contains clear water and is slightly wet and in circular motions i'm going to start mixing that ink and bring the ink towards the center of the image you will see that i have ink on the bristles of the brush so i'm cleaning that ink because I don't want the brush to be loaded with that ink. The idea here is to try to get a degradation of color. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to clean this brush and then just with clear water, but a tiny little bit of water, I'm spreading that ink towards the other edges of the image. Every time I feel that the brush is too loaded with ink, I just clean it and I just pass over those areas I want to be lighter. And you can stop just there, or you can enrich this composition by adding other layers of color. That's just one layer. And you can wait for this to dry, or you can just apply more color when this ink is still wet. This is semi-dry, and I'm going to apply beige. On some areas, I want to add vibrancy and shadows. Any color that tends to be yellow, it will do that. It will add a lot of life to dull brown colors. So I'm applying these at the edges of the image. In some areas, I consider there should be a shadow. And once I'm happy with the color I laid down, I just use a water brush. And this is again, slightly wet. And then I blend the color, trying to reduce the seams and you won't be able to see any seam of the color. If the color goes out of the edge of the image, you can just apply water and try to lift the color. These markers won't stain the paper badly. You can easily fix if you go out of the lines. And as you see there, I'm just using the ink that is over the image 
to blend that towards those areas that are still white. Then I'm going to apply the last color that is mustard, and this is a darker version of that beige color. It's precious, it's beautiful to add shades. So I'm going to add this over the edges of the images just to make the color more intense. That's it. But it is super key and I'm going to repeat like crazy that you need to use very little water. These do not allow the use of a lot of water. This is less than a drop. That brush is almost dry and that's the key to succeed doing this, which is ultra super duper easy because the paper we are using is good quality it will hold plenty layers you can add more if you want <laughs> so now i'm going to add color to the next image and i'm going to use gray shades again i randomly grab from the marker box three colors and this is mid gray gray and gray brown then i'm going to repeat the process i just made with the previous image i'm going to add this dark or the darker color i have in my in my hand and I'm going to add it at the edges of the image, a little bit on the forehead of the critter. And then I'm going to apply the medium shade that I just choose randomly next to those lines that I just applied there. Using the water brush, I'm going to blend the color. This is clear water again, very little water. And I'm just going to do this in circular motion, dragging that ink or pulling that ink towards the center of the image but not going too far away just a little bit and then because this has too much water i'm going to clean the brush and i'm going to keep working with the brush as clean as possible to achieve that lighter areas on the belly of the critter then this is still wet and i'm going to drop in the mid gray and there is something funny here because the mid gray looks a lot lighter in the cap than in real <laughs> so actually this looks like a shade and it's actually the darker color that i'm applying on that image and it's okay it gives me the perfect opportunity to show you that it doesn't matter the order in which you apply the color you will always achieve a nice result if you understand the logic of the technique so it's basically apply the color over the edge of the image Blend that color with some contrasting color this, from the same family and then bring that towards the center of the image but try to leave white areas and lighter areas at the center of the image to give volume. As we know that this mid gray is amazing for shadows, I'm going to use that mid gray here on this next image to add some shadows and I'm going to apply it on those areas I believe that it should be a shadow in the base of the ears, at the edges of the arms, and also here behind the mouse, because that mouse is creating a shadow there. And also here at the very bottom of the image, just to add a little bit of contrast uh, between that area and the feet of that bunny. I want the dog to be gray as well, but a different shade of gray. So I'm going to grab a blue gray marker and I'm going to grab the marker box to find a darker gray color that can go with this one. This is the blue gray that I have on my table, but I have two of them because I bought two sets of these markers. So I have two of the same color. And you will see these are the three colors I just used before. So I just grabbed them because of the color in that plastic cap. And um, this is the blue gray I'm using. Then I'm going to get this one here and this one here is called dark gray. <laughs> so it's easy, you know, it's not that hard to go and find the color to, to color your images. So I'm going to use the darker color again over the edge of the image and not all over the edge, just in some areas, a little bit on the forehead of the critter. And then I'm going to blend this color straight away because I want this dog to be very light. You will see that I'm not adding color all over the whole image, just on some areas. And I just blend this with the water brush slightly wet and I'm not applying more ink at all. I'm going to add blue gray here in this edge and also on the opposite edge and under the arm 
and here at the bottom of the image. It's just a little bit and also here on the forehead and the base of the ears. And again, with the water brush with very little water and in circular motions, I'm going to blend this. But before, I decided to use this pale pink to add color to the nose and the cheeks of the creatures. It's good to do this before blending because when you blend these darker shades of colors into that pink color, it's not going to look like a patch of color, but some pink color showing through and it's really nice to do it in that way. So when you are creating cheeks to your critters, that's not the last thing you do. It's actually one of the first things you do. It's totally optional. You can do it in the middle of the process if you want, as I'm doing it there. So you blend everything with water all the time. And I like to keep these white areas in the arms and also the belly and the face. It's, it's really kind of cute and it's something super easy to achieve. Now I'm going to add color to the cat and I'm going to use bright yellow and beige. So my plan is to add colors as Anita Geram does. I'm totally copying her style in this cat. Also add in mine though. And I'm going to add this uh, orangey color that is bright yellow on certain areas of the image like so. And then immediately over this color, I'm going to add beige. And that beige is going to neutralize that super bright color because I'm not crazy about that color for the cat. But I like the way that these two colors looks when you blend them together. Then again, and always, you are going to use the water brush to soften those colors or the edges of the areas in which you are adding those colors. And you can spread the colors towards other areas of the image. In here, the brush is almost dry. I'm not pressing the bottle of the brush. So the brush is almost dry, but at this stage is very loaded with that ink so I have to clean it and then I come back with very little water again. Something that I have to tell you is that you will see some marks on the face of the cat. It's annoying me when I was die cutting the paper I transfer ink that it was left from a previous die cutting session in which I was die cutting stamped images. So sometimes when you die cut panels like this that are already stamped, you transfer ink to the die cutting plates and then that ink will be transferred to new projects. So it's good to keep the die cutting plates clean. I didn't notice until it was too late. And to be honest, I thought I could cover that with ink. To add color to the mouses, I also want to use gray. So I just grab three random gray colors. It happens to be green, gray, gray, brown, and gray. And I'm going to use the darker color to add just a hint of color at the edges of the images. And these images are so tiny that with a couple of strokes, you will be done. So I'm just adding there the ink. And then I'm going to use green, gray. You could add this color here on different areas of the images. For example, in the base of the image here, and also under the head of the image, just like so. Because these images are so tiny that you want to achieve kind of different colors on different areas of the image. And I think that's the easier way to do it. And with the water brush, then you blend the colors and with the ink you got left from that blending, you can apply colors on the head of the images and the arms. I just noted that I got a area that I have in color. So I'm going to come back with any color I have there on my table just to fill that little gap that I didn't color. It happens all the time that you might not notice that you miss one spot of the image. You can just come back later and add some color. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color you added before. Remember, images have different colors, okay? No, not one single image is one single solid color. And I also noticed that I didn't add color to the arm of the little mouse here. I could just leave it like that, but I choose to add some color. Another thing is that you can stop 
at any stage of the blending, but I really love to do this and I really love adding shadows. So I'm going to apply gray brown on these images just to add shadows and I'm going to add it in certain areas where I believe that there should be a shadow. For me, the edges under the arms, under the head, that kind of places should have a shadow. But for you, it might be different. So don't hesitate to do it in the way you believe is the way to do it. And I also want to tell you something here, very important. I hope you see the whole video to not miss any tip. And is that when the paper is too wet, in this case, it's not wet like crazy, but it's wet, then the blending start being a little bit more difficult. So you won't be able to move that much the ink. So it's better to wait for the ink to dry and apply more ink. Here, I'm going to add just clear water over the white areas of the image. And I'm going to try to bring all those pigments or that ink around that area towards the center. So it doesn't look like a white patch, but something that is part of the image. Okay, something I do at the very end is to adjust the colors to my eye, <laughs> not to anyone else's eye, because actually when you are making something, you are your first judge and you will say, okay, I want this to be this way or not. So basically it's up to you. Then I'm going to add some shadows. In some areas, I think that I might go more intense. And I think that the key also to make a composition that is eye-catching is to play with the shadows. Here I'm using a dark brown marker and I'm applying this same color on different areas of all the images in this illustration. And my aim here is just to add contrast and to make everything to look more harmonic. This is completely optional. I'm just sharing with you my secrets. <laughs> so you will see that when adding this dark brown over any color, the color underneath change. And it just creates this beautiful contrast and degradation of colors. And it's super easy to achieve. At this stage, the paper is dry. So I'm applying this wash of brown over dry paper. It's not blending really into the color. It's a layer over the other one that makes the color looks really cool. You don't know what is happening there, but it's happening. And while I allow this to dry, I'm going to add color to the sky. And I'm going to grab a light color of blue, this one here that it happens to be called light blue. <laughs> and I'm going to grab another blue, contrast blue, any blue. And I grabbed this blue that is called cornflower blue. And I'm going to apply this on the mat. And with the water brush, I'm going to blend these colors. And I'm going to lift the color from the mat. And I'm going to apply it on the sky. I'm speeding the process here because this really doesn't need a lot of time to understand. You can allow this to dry and apply other wash and do it again and do it again as many times as you want. And all you have to do is to wait for each wash to dry and then apply another layer of color. Once you have done that, and you will do this very randomly and as uneven as possible, then you will have a sky as simple as that. So this is a proposal for you to go arty and easy. When the critters or the ink is completely dry, you will be able to see the final color. And I decided to add this mustard over this critter here, just to make it look different from all the gray critters. And to do that, I'm just adding a hint of color here and there. And with the water brush, I just blend the color. This is absolutely not necessary, but I want to share with you the whole process. You can use a heat tool to heat set the color 
and to see how this is going to look because these inks looks different when they are wet than when they are dry. So once I know that, yeah, that critter is looking completely different now, I'm happy. I'm going to do something in this cat because he's looking too flat. And then I'm going to add some shadows as well by adding dark brown on some areas of the image. I also added more of that dark brown on other images, more contrast here and there. Okay, to add grass, I want you to grab four green colors, a light green, a bright green, an olive green, and a oatmeal or a kind of brownish color. Okay, so using the lighter color of green, which is the light green, I'm going to apply the marker on the paper like so at the bottom of the panel, and I'm going to use a wet brush to spread the color. This is real time and this will take the time you want to finish this because from here there are very little steps that you need to repeat and repeat until you achieve your desired look. So once you apply this first layer of color and the paper is wet, you are going to use any of the other markers you choose for the grass and you are going to trace several little lines and dots across that area just like that. And here's the funny thing because my son damaged this marker. He completely destroyed the tip of this marker and I just keep it because the marker still works. But once I grab it by mistake and I start creating those lines for the grass and it was wonderful. <laughs> it's amazing. So because it has like four tips, when I apply this, if you see there, that will create a bunch of little dots at the same time, saving me a pile of time. And if I create lines, it creates some kind of cool lines as well. And when you finish with that color, you are going to apply the other colors. You can incorporate many different colors of green and brown. And then with a wet brush, you are going to apply water over those lines that you have made. This is going to distress the marker and this is going to look like something faded in the background that is not well defined. You are going to allow this to dry or use a heat tool to dry it and then you are going to repeat the process as many times as you need to to achieve a cool looking grass. So depending on the time you have and the mood you have, you will achieve completely different looks. When I decided to film this video, I already made several panels and I was a little bit tired. It's the Easter holiday. We have all the family at home. So a lot is going on behind the scenes. And this is the panel I actually color first and it's published on my blog but I didn't film the coloring process only this part in which I was adding the grass and shadows here at the base of the images and this looks pretty similar to the panel I just made almost identical although uh, sadly I sent away this card already so I don't I don't have a way to show you the comparison but uh, this was made on Arches watercolor paper and the colors on this paper looks a lot more vibrant and also the sky made in the same way it looks different however because that was a rough paper the color application took longer and blending wasn't as smooth as in Stratmore I also wanted to add colors to this image using Tombow markers I only have 12 colors I don't have gray or brown colors so I have to work with a very limited color palette but I also wanted to show you that even when you have very little colors or markers or different markers you can do this 
And in this, I'm going to speed the process because I honestly did something so very simple for this illustration that there is, in my opinion, there is no need to, to explain and keep you here for longer. What you need to know is that regardless the water-based marker I'm using, I do exactly the same. I can blend or apply different ink colors to the images in one go, apply just one and then blend with the water brush. But every time that I'm applying any color, the final step is to blend it with the water brush. And I always use very little water. For backgrounds, there is a variety of things you can do. You can use distressed inks to add color to the background. You can just leave the background just clean, or you can also use the same ink from the markers to do some crazy application of color like I'm doing there. And when this dry, this will look nice and that will make a handmade card. You don't need to spend a pile of time coloring. You don't need to use the same colors or traditional colors. You can just play with the color, but just knowing that this is easy and this is supposed to be stress-free and don't overthink. That's, that's my advice. So many people ask me to color uh, different images from these releases and the thing is I always do the same and I feel I'm doing the same thing over and over and what I want to do is to bring new things to you. But if you want me to color different images in the same way over and over, I will do it because at the end of the day I do this for you. I applied colors to this image from Amazing Mom stamp set using Artisa markers. It took me another 20 minutes. I don't want to keep you here for longer, but I did exactly the same. You have to experiment which kind of colors you want to apply to your images. You can just apply one wash of color. That will be perfectly okay. Or you can play and go crazy in layer and layer color until you are happy. When I say layer and layer color, remember that I use very tiny amounts of colors at the time. It looks like I did a lot of things, but these images are small. So I have to add a dot of color, wait for it to dry and apply another one to build up the color. And I can guarantee that this technique works with any water-based marker you might have. These markers are similar in many things, but they are also different in others. I will advise to watch my video about Artisa watercolor brushes here on my YouTube channel. It's a detailed video about the pens and how they work and how to do the best of them. I just bought my first package of Tombow and in terms of ink performance and ink colors, these are all pretty similar. Although I use completely different color families to add color with the different mediums, just to show you the possibilities. So you can find pictures of these cards on my blog and the supplies I use in this video are in a list in the video description, just below this video. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.